sustainability. Okay, let us ask before I start the session, what do you mean by the word sustain or sustainability? Anyone, please raise your hands. Yeah, please. What do you mean by sustain? To sustain, what is it? Well, it's very, very, I said very simple language, you know, you talk, okay, fine. So sustainability, as you would say, economics, business and community, balancing all three is sustainability. Anyone? Quick, quick one. Yeah, please, Hitesh. Very well, very well said. Please give him a big round of applause for that. So managing, you know, present well, right? I mean, uh, so how do you manage your present wealth so that your future is also sustained? You know, we can say sustained, right? So, uh, to opening the session is uh, we have a wonderful panel, and uh, we, what we're going to talk about is sustainable talent. So we have a lot of other topics. So, how to have a sustainable talent in the organization so that migration is lesser, people are well trained, well recognized. So we have an eminent panel of members. And uh, not to waste more time, I would like to introduce them. So please give a big round of applause. I would call one by one and uh, I would request you all the panel members to come and uh, kindly uh, have a seat. So please give a big round of applause to Dr. C. Manohar from ISBR. <laughs> ISBR Research Center. Mr. Vinod Matthews, he's a workplace op operation head from CSC. We give a big round of applause. Mr. Kumara from Citrix, he's a lead in Citrix. Mr. Uh, Srinivas Venkat from ANZ. And last but not the least, Mr. Rajesh Vaidya from CBRE. So thank you very much everyone. So if you see the panel, uh, first of all I would like uh, each one of them, you have a microphone there, uh, to just introduce yourself in one line, what, uh, what, uh, which, uh, how many years of experience you have, which organization you represent. So, uh, starting from Srinivas, uh, can you just take the mic please? Hello? Yeah. So, uh, good evening everybody. So, my name is uh, Srinivas uh, V. Uh, I'm head of facilities in uh, Australia and New Zealand Bank. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer and I have uh, close to around 20, 22 years experience in uh, facilities, administration and projects. Uh, to, uh, initially for 10 years I was in manufacturing and remaining 12 years in corporate uh, real estate side. So to, to name few companies, I was associated with uh, Tata, uh, Honeywell and uh, Symphony Telica and presently with uh, the ANZ Bank. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vinod Matthews. Uh, I head the workplace services for Computer Sciences Corporation. I have a little over 18 years of experience. I worked with companies like Microsoft, HCL, and prior to that, I was with the Indian Army. Thank you. I'm Dr. Manohar. I come with 30 years of experience with wide background, like uh, I would say more diverse education, government, industry, and the World Bank projects. Currently, I'm heading the International School of Business and Research and the Research Center as a dean and as chairperson. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kumara. I work for Citrix. I'm heading real estate and facilities in Citrix organization. Prior to Citrix, I worked for SAP, where I was there for 11 years. Prior to that, I worked for Wipro and ABB. Thanks, Kumara. Uh, hi everyone, uh, this is Rajesh Vaidya. I work with CBRE and uh, I take care of the CBRE uh, business in Bangalore. Been with CBRE for past 12 years. Uh, prior to CBRE, I used to be a hotelier. I spent about 19 years with uh, different kind of hotels uh, like ITC, uh, the Royal Orchid uh, and Banyan Hotels, Singapore. Uh, thanks, over to you Pradik. All right. So thank you very much, uh, everyone. Uh, in fact, uh, you need to congratulate Rajesh. He's getting an award today for the CBRE. So a uh, big round of applause for him for that. Thank you. Uh, fine. So uh, before wasting much time, in fact, uh, quickly, you know, when we talk about sustainable employment and we talk about how to sustain or retain 
you know, employees, especially who are the high flyers one. So I would like to just first start with, and that I'm talking about in facility management, right? So I'm, I'll start with Rajesh, your views on how to sustain an employee in fraternity, an FM fraternity. Uh, thanks, Pratik. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, you know, when we started this topic, uh, we did have a chat uh, about a week ago, and uh, we said, uh, you know, sustainable talent. So I want to know, where is the talent today? Uh, are we talking about talent uh, present in this room? Or am I talking about talent uh, which is somewhere hidden, uh, st still studying in college? somebody who's still doing his hotel management, like uh, doctor was mentioning, uh, you know, you first need to love your country. Right, doctor? Uh, you need to love your job. Now, when we talk about that, where is my talent gone? Uh, we, we panelists sitting here, are we, we talking about uh, who's talented here? Am I talented? Are my audience talented? But where is the talent? And how do I recognize my talent? Where do I go and say my talent is available within me, my talent is sitting with me, my talent is available somewhere else? Am I looking at only FMs? If my audience today is only FM, then I think I'm not doing justice to what I'm going to be talking today. My audience should be non-FM. And that's when I need to educate my people saying that why I need talented guys to come into an FM. Right, doctor and me have spent, uh, uh, you know, several days talking about this. We, I have known doctor for several years when I used to work with the hotels doctor. You remember those? And he used to tell me, Rajesh, you, you really get talented people, and especially in the hotels. Yes, because hotels do have hospitality industry where they develop people. And today, I think Infra is doing a right job by educating people, saying that, all right, let's study, let's study FM. Very much, Rajesh. If I may take a cue. Sure, sure. You can just uh, continue, right. doctor. Yeah. Uh, you know, FM is no longer a brick and mortar. There used to be days before the industry is today what it is. If you look at the diversity of industry, the spread, the width, and the breadth of it, um, it is just not brick and mortar. If in your facility today in an IT company, if your system is down, your server is down, your client in America is down, it's just not that. So we got to redefine what is that facility management we are talking about relating to the facilities, the diversity, the technology that we are dealing with it today. So what we are aiming at is at least start somewhere. Having said that, a question to my mind which comes, you know, when we talk about migration employees and everything, you know, to sustain an employee in an organization, especially in the FM field, what is the trend? He either is from hotel management background or he is from engineering background. He comes to work with a service provider. After some years, he may join a kind of integrated facility man like uh, CBRE is there or JL is there. After that, he then goes, he aspires to be on the client side. So, how, why, uh, so why, where the, why there is no sustainability in between the organization? Is there something he wants? Is it an uh, issue of salary or is it issue of recognition? or is there are other issues. So uh, I would like to ask Srinivas's question on that. What is his thoughts on this like, you know, I mean, people must have joined your organization. He was from ANZ. Yeah. Uh, maybe they were part of service provider. So Srinivas, your thought takes on that quickly. Thank you for uh, forwarding that question. So uh, maybe I'll start with a few examples. Um, in ANZ especially, uh, we have done several uh, changes to sustain uh, the talent. Uh, if I take uh, the FM talent in ANZ, uh, the best example is uh, uh, we give, even give the email ID to them. So for example, the person name is Shashi, uh, uh, who is in the FM side, he will um, uh, have an email ID of shashi dot at anz.com. So we don't uh, uh, separate, uh, you know, the IFM, or the service provider, or the client. We treat them everybody same actually. So we feel that um, uh, beyond, uh, uh, you know, pay cycle, there are so many other things. One is the recognition, uh, togetherness, um, uh, involving them in the decision making, 
Uh, in fact, uh, all our um, uh, IFM uh, people, you know, they participate in uh, senior management um, meetings, events, all hands, everything. So there's absolutely no differentiation made uh, between uh, um, the, the staff and uh, the FM side. Um, so, so you mean to say equal recognition yes. for FM, that's the only reason, uh, you know, your take on that, I mean, just to continue what uh, she is telling. So uh, I have a different perspective altogether. I think it's it's uh, it's a lot depends on how the individual approaches. Uh, so uh, by virtue that the opportunities on the client side are relatively lesser, and on the service provider side, the opportunities are much more. But uh, that said, I know in person people who have moved from client side to service provider side, and uh, they when I asked them the question. Uh, the answer which I got was quite quite amazing. He says that I can become the CEO of this company, but staying in an X company, I, I can just be a head of a department. So it a lot of things depends on how an individual approaches a situation. And uh, for me, uh, I take a leaf from what he said. Uh, there's there's uh, the difference comes how you treat your service provider. So that respect. Uh, automatically elevates the elevates the overall output. It it doesn't matter whether it is fra coming in from a, a, a full time or a outsourced partner. Well said, well said. Yeah, very well said. Uh, very well said, man. Uh, Kumar, you want to add something which Mr. Uh, wants to talk about? Yeah. Uh, I would like to start with uh, what Rajesh started. Uh, one is uh, sustainability of the talents. Second is where are the talents? Okay, that is the biggest question today. We need to have a right talents in our organization or in our fraternity to manage huge budget. I think uh, all of you is, all of you are aware that in our industry, FM industry, uh, we manage s largest budget. Means after salary or after HR, the biggest spenders are real estate and facilities team in any IT or uh, industry. Okay, so to manage that big budget. And also, we are going to be conduit between employees and management. So the person who is going to manage this portfolio should have skills in many areas. Not only technical skills, even how to manage people, people management. So that's key. I would like to ask uh, in the audience here, in fact, anyone in the, you know, uh, so if you are an FM and do you really sit with your CFO and say, no, look, uh, I know your budget and all, but this will be not good for the organization. Anyone want to share something? Yes. Can we have mics, please, there? It's good to see interactive audience here. Uh, couple of mics, please. This change now, and uh, today uh, you are able to sit in front of CFO and talk to them. One of the things based on my experience, as uh, Vinod said, my experience I can share. One of the things is you can sit with. Actually, what I go every year, my budget discussion happens not more than 15 or 20 minutes. What we'll go is we go with a waterfall model kind of a thing. Say that this is what you are spending to provide the services. Then additional expenses, whatever you are putting in, put it saying that this is what the benefits you get it by way of putting it. That way if you do that, I see there is an 80 percent, 80 to 85 percent success factor is there. You have a clear cut justifications and details where you want to do. Many of the time we need to get into the ground and understand why we are doing certain things. Many a time this all gets sought down because we don't have an answer to the CFO. Very clear. In fact no, I agree with you. Uh, sorry, uh, Ram, I agree, but everybody is not Ram here. <laughs> In our industry, everybody is not wrong. And that's the reason I'm not able to... One of the things is what you do, try to understand it. One of the things is very clearly, you will be able to say that if you go with the different kind of this waterfall model, this is the way it has to be done, and this is the water cost, Tell them the pros and cons. It's not that CFO is not understanding it. One thing is you have to find a time to make him understand this thing. That would happen. That, is, that has to be done. That is an art which I would ask the entire FM community to understand and learn that. And you need to be able to convince and look at what you want. You have to get it. So, Agreed, Ram. So Just Ahmed, one Ahmed, example. You have, uh, one more workshop uh, for the art of uh, 
You don't convince me to see a fold. No, one second, Pradeep. I'll just, uh, you know what Ram was saying. Ram, I'll give you a very small example. This is not very far. Just, I'm talking about last month. Just like what you're saying is, you know, make the CFO sit in front of you. Yes, as a service provider, we were sitting, and you will not believe till night, 12 o'clock, that CFO was calling the other service providers and giving our numbers, sitting in front of us and trying to bring the cost down. Yeah, he was negotiating, and I told him only one thing: if this is what you're going to do. I don't think I'll be able to get talent for you. Is that what you're looking at? You know what he told me? He said, "I need services. I'm not looking here for talent. That's not my job. That's your job. Uh, what I'm looking at is service." Well, uh, now yes, that's where I feel. Say something. In fact, you wanted to share something. Uh, see, why we are speaking on this is very, very important. Because see, if you have budgets and if you have right budget, you are able to pay and recognize the right talent. If you are able to pay and recognize the right talent. the sustainability of the employment of that particular person is you know there's a longevity in that right so we were just addressing this simple yes you want to uh, yeah pradeep here rajesh and vinod uh, matthews uh, coming and touching it the right code and the right on, on target i would say why we were talking about sustainability and uh, today if fm has to sustain uh, you know we as fm managers have a lot to do you know uh i think 10 years uh, or back maybe when i came to this industry you know uh, fm used to be what managing a bunch of housekeeping staff and uh, you know security guards and uh, you know and the undefined jobs like getting a driver's license or you know renewing the license getting registration done for the senior management things like that i think a lot of water has flown down the i mean flowed down the bridge since then and today i'm very happy when uh, you know ram and uh, we know this you know and rajesh has come out with this point i think today is high time we put our foot down if you have to sustain as a facility manager you have to be much more than a facility manager you have to be part of the procurement you have to be part of the finance you have you have to be involved from day one on the budgeting you have to be you know you should have done your homework right and proper before the budget what is your planning for the budget and what are the additional creative you know value addition you are going to create what is that budget required for that and you have to put your foot down there is no you know uh, shortcut to this and uh, the biggest challenge to that is your cfo and uh, if you can you know put your foot down and uh, convince uh, the cfo and the senior management i think you have done your job and that is one and uh, one of the most important aspect of sustaining the facility management in any whether it's outsourced people or whether it is people within the within the fm uh, segment in in the industry right or in the company why is it that people are these guys are not bringing in such solutions to be implemented right if that is implemented i do not see why a cfo would not raise his hands and say i love this idea because for him you are actually helping him save money and like you were telling about rois right 6 months 9 months a cfo really doesn't care because the company is running on an infinite role we are not going to shut down a company in 4 years or 5 years or 10 years right if if you can help me understand why we are not doing this one big looming gap that that we all see and i think it was the elephant in the room we all kind of touched it but did not really address it as a whole i think i'll address this to rajesh because you know it's such a big question that you put all right uh, we all scared let me be honest all right it's not only me as a service provider even as an organization people sitting on the top are scared for a very simple reason they all love their jobs and i'm very honest and frank about it because nobody like you said there's an elephant nobody wants to go there yes nobody want to touch that topic where everybody loves the job nobody wants to cross that line because they are scared who's not scared service provider you know why he may get a job he may not get a job tomorrow but he knows there's another job waiting for me it's very simple today as you said whether it's a cfo or the head of re head of fm i'm sorry they all scared they all love their jobs just like me nobody wants to cross that line and that's why we not able to success uh, you know find that success that everybody is looking at today we are all scared we are saying we don't want to touch because if he does something i lose my job correct me if i'm wrong 
Everybody is quiet in this room. Nobody wants to challenge that. I know how it is. So I think that's fine. Thank he you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Can we have a big round of applause for the I'm, panel? I'm please? sorry. As a service provider, that is what I have said. Can we have a, first of all, a big round of applause for the Rajesh, panel? Rajesh, it will only lead to uh, controversy. Pratik, that's why I people just are want quiet. to take one moment. There's a, uh, I think uh, we, this we, will lead to controversy. Only that's why people are quiet. We don't agree to what you're saying. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, we can have a cup of coffee and we break. can debate for hours. I don't agree. <laughs> We are not Pratik, scared of our jobs. We, we talked about pride of this uh, profession, but one thing I notice here, manpower, women power, why are we not in, uh, talking about it? Look at this audience, how many are there? And can we not create that there is equal amount of talent and capability here? Uh, can we encourage them to, probably Chaitra is here, do you have a take on this? Uh, how much of it is liked? Is there not a pride in this line? Why women are not forthcoming? A counter question. Well, you have a session, I know. You're going to talk Chaitra there. is going to cover that, in fact, in corporate sustainability, you know, next topic. Uh, so, thank you very much. Of course, there will be some uh, opinions and counter opinions and uh, views and counter views on that. But with that, I end the session. And thank you for uh, being a wonderful panel. Uh, can you give a big round of applause for them, please?